Hey, this is Andre, and this is a new video about the difference between Old Church Slavonic and Old East Slavic. So this video is going to be special because it's about a specific phenomenon that exists only in Slavic languages, and specifically in East Slavic languages, which are Ukrainian, Russian, Belarusian, and Old East Slavic. So this phenomenon is called pleophony, and we're gonna take a closer look at this pleophony phenomenon in this video. Okay. So the source language for both Old East Slavic and Old Church Slavonic was Proto-Slavic, kind of an umbrella language for all of today's Slavic languages. The Proto-Slavic language had the so-called liquid diphthongs, which were OL OR, L R, meaning the combination between O or E with L or R. And these liquid diphthongs had different reflexes in the two languages. These liquid diphthongs had the effects that we are looking at only in closed syllables. So the Proto-Slavic O continued as LA in Old Church Slavonic and as OLO in Old East Slavic. And let's take a look at the examples. The first example is the Proto-Slavic word for hair, which is WOLSU. And this WOLSU continued as VLASU in Old Church Slavonic and as VOLOSU in Old East Slavic. The next example is the word for head, which was GOLVA in Proto-Slavic, and it continued as GLAVA in Old Church Slavonic and as GOLOVA in Old East Slavic. The second liquid diphthong with O is OR. So the Proto-Slavic OR continued as RA in Old Church Slavonic and as ORO in Old East Slavic. And the examples are GORDO, the Proto-Slavic for town, and it continued as GRADO in Old Church Slavonic and as GORODU in Old East Slavic. The other example is BORDA, which meant a beard, and it continued as BRADA in Old Church Slavonic and as BORODA in Old East Slavic. Okay. The next set of liquid diphthongs were the combinations of E with L and R. So the Proto-Slavic L had the reflex of LE in Old Church Slavonic and OLO or ELO in Old East Slavic. Let's take a look at the examples. The Proto-Slavic word for booty is PELNO and it continued as PLIENO in Old Church Slavonic and as POLONO in Old East Slavic. The second word is helmo, which meant helmet. And you can clearly see here that this helmo word in Proto-Slavic was a borrowing from a Germanic language because you see how close it sounds to the English equivalent. Yet the continuation of this helmo word do not look as similar to the English equivalent as this Proto-Slavic word did. So the Old Church Slavonic word for helmet is Shliemo, and the Old East Slavic word for this is Shelomo. Okay, and the final combination of liquid diphthongs is E plus R, which is R, and it continued as Rie in Old Church Slavonic and as Ere in Old East Slavic. We can see that on the following examples. The word for a shore or a riverbank in Proto-Slavic was Bergo. And you can also see that this looks pretty much like a Germanic word for, for instance, a German word for a mountain, Berg. And there are various opinions about this word, whether it was a borrowing from a Germanic tongue or it was just a related Slavic word. Anyways, the continuation of Bergo in Old Church Slavonic was Briegu and in Old East Slavic it was Beregu. The second example is the word for a middle, middle of something, which was Serda and it gave Srieda in Old Church Slavonic and Sereda in Old East Slavic. By the way, it's also the word for Wednesday because it was the middle of the week. This is it for today's video. Stay tuned to our channel. Like and subscribe. If you have a question or a comment, please drop them below. Thank you. See you next time.